Hey lovies, welcome back to my channel. It's been a minute. It's been a minute since I've come on here showing my face. A lot has happened and changed. I've gone um, orange. It's been so long actually that I've already grown roots. <laughs> That's how long it's been since I've been on here talking to you guys, but I'm super excited. I have my notes here. Um, and if you've been seeing, um, community page or if you have been following along on Instagram, you can find me here at Lipstick Legion Craft. Um, I've wanted and I finally decided that I wanted to share my fertility journey. So we're going to do that today. I'm going to start really with the basics. I'm going to start with um, what I've gone through so far. Um, I have a small little haul that I've gotten for my birthday from my mom. And I think I really want to share these items because they're amazing. And I think they can be useful to you guys um, who are trying to conceive. Um, we're going to talk again. Um, I mentioned this in the last video. We're going to talk about um, things that I wish I knew before I started any of my treatments. How much does this cost? I mean, um, how I feel, how I incorporate magic into uh, and witchcraft into trying to conceive. All of that good stuff is um, going to come on this channel. So I hope that you will enjoy this and come along on the ride with me. Okay, so let's start off by kind of going over what I have done so far. So in my journey, our first um, step towards uh, fertility, and what is very common is that you take an IUI first. Um, and usually an IUI comes after maybe about a year and a half of trying. So my husband and I were trying to conceive for about that time, a year and a half, and then I think we just came to the realization that we didn't want to waste any more time and we wanted to consult a fertility doctor. So the, one of the first steps before you really just jump into other more, um, I don't want to say abrasive, but other procedures, you basically start with an IUI. And an IUI is an intrauterine insemination. So what that means is that you will go to the fertility doctor. If I went to the fertility doctor, I did a sonogram to see how many follicles I had. Um, and then by the follicles, you will take medication to stimulate these follicles and get them into a mature state. Once they reach a level of maturity, um, there is the actual insemination part. So the insemination requires my husband to give a sample and then they actually do the insemination. So my first IUI was, um, I think we're in May now, so that was back, I believe, in um, February um, going into March. And unfortunately, that was unsuccessful. So depending on your insurance, um, you may have to do a few rounds of IUIs before you're considered for an IVF. In my case, thank goodness, I knew that family prep was something that I wanted to do this year, so I umped my insurance. And that's one tip, and we'll go over that in a different video of like tips and tricks. But if you are coming to a year end and um, you have the chance to uh, upgrade your insurance and you are thinking about starting a family, I would highly suggest that you do that. So that way, a lot of your treatments and a lot of the medications is covered in your insurance. So again, I have really good insurance and I, um, I was able to continue with the IVF um, after one round of an IUI. So that's what I'm doing now. I just went to my doctor's office this morning. It's May 3rd. So posting it today and I got some really good news. So I happen to have eight follicles this round, which is amazing. Um, when I did my IUI, even, um, before then, um, I think I was, I either had five or six. So the fact that I have eight is amazing. So um, they've made it very clear to me that um, the follicle count, I shouldn't kind of be too hopeful or I shouldn't count my chickens before they hatch because not every follicle develops. And that's part of the stimulation 
um, that they give you to get those follicles up. So that's kind of where I've been. Um, today is my first day of, well, technically not my first day of IVF. Um, I've taken, I've taken, um, some medication. So let's go through the medication first and then we'll end with the, um, the haul and I'll try to put some timestamps below. So that way, um, if you need to kind of jump around, um, feel free to do that. So I want to say here that I am in no way a doctor. I'm just sharing the things that I'm doing. You in your journey may have different medications. You may take them differently. Um, some of the vitamins may not be good for you to take depending on if you're taking other medication. So definitely always consult with your doctor, your OBGYN and your fertility doctor to see if any things that I say um, may be helpful on your journey. So again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a physician. I'm just sharing the things that I'm doing in hopes to be motivational, inspirational, and kind of give you um, a little bit of guidance. There are a lot of fertility, um, you know, um, things that you can watch. I love the um, Egg Whisperer. So the Egg Whisperer is really good information. She is actually a doctor. So um, really good information to kind of get on there and learn for yourself. So anyone who is going through these procedures, I definitely urge you to do some education because you might things might go so fast at the clinic and then when you get home you're just like what just happened what did i just experience um youtube i learned a lot such valuable information on youtube i, I really can't even stress that enough so um yeah i would love for you to follow along on my journey there's thousands of other women who are going through the same thing so if you need some inspiration or you just need some motivation to push on um youtube has endless um support for you okay so one of the first um medications that i took and i'm taking more it's our lovely folistem so this is what it looks like when you actually get the your uh, starter box they give you um your your uh medication in there and this is what a follistem pen looks like. So typically, your follistem pen, um, you will load in. So it's empty. You will load in the cartridge that they give you for your medication. And then depending on the dosages, here is your dosage. So mine was 100. So I would go all the way to 100 and stop. And then I would um, do the injection. If you miss this 100, you can keep going. And that kind of brings you all the way back to zero. So this is Folistem. And what this does is that this is a uh, medication to help um, boost your follicles, to help them reach a mature stage where they can be potential eggs for your insemination. That was the only medication that I took for an IUI. Um, now that I'm doing IVF, <laughs> The medication is so much. I got a, I, I'll be right back. You guys, this is all the medication that came in with the IVF procedure. You guys, don't worry. Um, I think I'm going to do a, a whole dedicated video on all the medications. Let's do a deep dive of what they are, including Follistem. I just kind of gave you a brief rundown, but it's a lot of medication for IVF and I'm still learning. So you guys are kind of learning with me and doing the whole the whole process along with me so we can kind of teach each other. But I'm in your IVF treatment, one of your uh, medications will be the Folistem and the pen. Um, I'm not doing that so far yet. The beginning of my IVF treatment, I'm doing this Luperline think it's um it's going to be backwards for you but this is luprolide or lupron and what this does is that this is a daily injection i take this is a 14 day um supply but i take about um 10 units of this so when you get this it'll be a whole kit for you um so it'll be your syringes sorry if you guys um get icky with that but um, this one, I'm taking 10 units of Lupron um, with the actual bottle. 
the fall system has to be refrigerated the rest of the medication doesn't so the lupron is just um a vial of medication that i in, um take out 10 units of and that goes in in and around the belly um every day for about 14 days and some depending on your hormone levels so again, starting off with the basics, you have, if you're taking your IUI, you would take Folistim. And if you are just starting your IVF treatment, you would take Lupron. And I forgot to mention that Lupron is really just to kind of prolong your ovulation. This is meant to kind of give you a baseline. So that way, when you start taking your, stimul um, your stimulants, um, it, it's you're starting off at a good point with Lupron. So that's what this is, is to kind of level out your hormones before you start any stimulation. Okay, so next, let's talk about over-the-counter things that you can use. And there are a few, and I really think, at least for me, that it's actually really working because the fact that I have eight follicles this month to work with with my IVF is fantastic. It's such great news because um, I have low um, ovarian reserve, so an AMH which is your anti-molarian hormone, um, that can really tell you about your egg count, right? So depending on your age and how the lifestyle that you've led, you can have a really good um, uh, egg reserve for your age. But unfortunately with me and my age and um, the fact that I've been smoking, which really was a kick to the stomach when I first heard because... No one wants to hear that your bad habits have affected your AMH levels. That was really difficult for me to kind of go through um, when I found out. But when you do IVF, it's really good to see, you know, your AMH levels can predict your the, the, the amount of eggs that you can carry. So um, me having a low AMH, AMH level, I have the egg reserve of like someone in their mid 40s, which is pretty bad. I have a 0.61. So I'll read here your normal and please look at your age, um, your weight. They all kind of play a factor, you know, your lifestyle. But normally from Google, um, a 1.0 is your normal um, AMH. A low normal is anywhere from 0.7 to 0.9, and then a low is 0.3 to 0.6, and I'm at 0.61. So I have a low AMH, um, you know, egg reserve. Um, but I, from what I've read in the research, I'm gonna stay positive. I know that low AMH, there's been many successful, uh, successful IVFs with low AMH, but, because of that and because I know that um, I you know I wanted to get some over-the-counter medication um, to kind of see what can help me with that so first and foremost you always 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 want to get a prenatal so this one is pink stork and it's been really good I haven't had any side effects from this one um, and then it has plus DHA and then there is some folic acid there's enough folic acid that you need in each dose for your prenatal. It's really, really important to have that folic acid. That's one of the major things that my fertility doctor told me is to make sure that I eat spinach if I'm not getting the folic acid that I need from my prenatal. The next one that I can recommend to you is the alpha lipoic acid. And this is age-related infertility, and this is for diminished ovarian reserve. So this is exactly kind of when I did some research, this is the one that they um, recommended. Um, so I've been taking this. I'm actually almost out. I only have three of these. So I got this off of um, Amazon. So this is for anyone who has low AMH like I do, um, diminished ovarian reserve or who or age related. So because I'm 38, I'm at that like at that gap where um, it's getting a little bit harder and harder to actually conceive. So the um, the glyphoic um, acid is a really good over the counter, um, you know, vitamin for that. And CoQ10 is really popular in the TTC world. So CoQ10 is a molecule found in the egg. So this is good for egg quality. So um, 
a quality is always 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 great and it really should be discussed almost every time because you can have a bunch of eggs and you can fertilize them but the, if the quality is not there um you know that's when you may run into issues so coq10 is all about um you know getting that good a quality Okay, so let's get to some fun things, um, awesome things that um, I want to share with you and what I've got from my mom for my birthday. I'll share some Etsy shops that um, I kind of want to highlight and maybe you can purchase for a friend or for yourself. So um, the first thing that um, I got was an IVF journal. How awesome is this? Okay, so this has to be my favorite. This is the IVF journal, <clears throat> and I love, love, love journaling. If you've been on my channel for a while, I love journaling. I love junk journals. My grimoire is junk journal style. It's always been pretty much junk journal style, if I really think about it. Even when I was a teen, I used to scrapbook and things like that. So it's always kind of been that way. So the fact that my mom gave me an IVF journal is just so, so awesome. So now I've pretty much had been taking um, my Lupron for a week and hopefully within the end of this week we'll really start the injections and things like that. This is a perfect time to really deep dive into this journal. So I love the fertility tracker. So really good to, you know, give you your LH spike if you, right before you do your, um, your IUI or IVF, um, this is really good fertility tracker to track yourself. Um, you know, if you're still kind of working on trying to conceive on your own. So like cervical fluid, it's good to see like if you are, um, starting to ovulate ovulate yes or no ovulation pains like this is basically a tracker very similar to what you will find um in an on a phone app um medication this is really good so i'm going to start this and i'm going to already fill it out um, medication name and example so when i go and do all of the medications one by one um i'll have this with me so you can kind of see how i relate all of that medication into my tracking so this gives you a medication, medication name, example, the dosages. Really cool, results of your hormone and symptoms. So right now, um, your basal temp, your progesterone, like if you're taking follicles right side, so I know that um, for the follicles, I have five on my right and on my left is, is three, leading to eight. So this is really cool. It's really nice to kind of see the size too. Record the size. How are they progressing? Do you have an alpha? Is your fertility doctor trying to lessen the dosage so that way the other um, follicles can catch up to your alpha? That all kind of matters. And this is really good to do your sizing of your follicles here and tracking them. Um, your blood, urine, and other test results. So this is good. For example, today, got my my blood results back of my hormone levels. This is something that's great to put in here. Doctor's appointments, such. This is like really awesome because you will know once you start your fertility journal, you're in that clinic at least two to three times a week, especially if you're starting to get um <clears throat> you're starting to get closer to the retrieval date and you've been taking your um stimulants it's literally three times a week it's and it's just so it just goes by so fast and if you don't document it and put an alert on your phone it's just life happens you know <laughs> so really awesome love the quotes and you can kind of like um pencil in here color paint you are stronger than the struggles you face like i just love that what to do on your two-week wait your dreaded two-week wait and then um here there's some it looks like this is your monthly um tracker and your notes for the month and it may just go in order. So appointments, really cool. I love this kind of planning all in one page. Love this. Really nice um, quotes. This says, use for transfer days, the two weeks wait, um, cycle tracking, doctor's appointment, or just good old days versus bad days. Really awesome. Daily energy versus mood tracker. You have more props here on this side. 
And there you go. And it goes back to fertility tracker. So really awesome. I love this. Another month. Week ahead. You are worthy. I love this. Um, energy versus mood. I feel like I'm really tired and sometimes I'm getting um, back cramping from the Lupron. I feel like. But that's something to journal on. Really cool. So it just goes on and on and on um, for a couple months. Let's see what they have in the back if anything is different. Two weeks wait. Your worth is not determined by your fertility. Oh, how how accurate is that? No, and then it just stops. So really awesome. So you have really all that you need to track your moods, your appointments, how you feel, your medication, your dosages. That's so, so, so important. Right now, I have that all on my laptop, but I'm going to definitely take that information and put it onto here. Valuable information and a valuable keepsake to kind of look back and... and keep this as a memento and to know that it was a struggle you know and all good things come to those who really push hard at their intentions the second item that i have is a um, ivf meal plan so my doctor my fertility doctor did mention that um though what you eat is very 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 important in trying to conceive and making sure that you're giving your IVF procedure the most you know <laughs> you can only do as much as you can when it comes to your body I'm not the boss my doctor's not the boss the eggs are the boss my my eggs and how they develop is how they do that. So, but how we can help is through medication, eating right, you know, and having your mind right. So that's where the medication, the the meal plans, and the IVF journal come in. But um, yeah, let me share some of the things that they show you in the meal plan. I think it's really, really important, if for nothing else, that you eat healthier and you give your body, you know, that good fighting chance. Okay, so this is the IVF meal plan book. Let's just take a look in here so you can see um, how it's formatted and if it works for you. It says maximize your chances of IVF success through diet, which I really do think it's really, really impor important to incorporate this into your um, journey. So here um, they go through some of the introductions, um, this is really good reading material. Everything you need to know about how food impacts your egg quality. And this really, if for nothing else, is really to get you into a healthier lifestyle. In turn, um, trying to create a healthy environment for your eggs. And that will hopefully promote um, good egg quality. So um, more information about that eating for three you and your ovaries which is so is so true what does food have what does food have to do with IVFs so like it talks about the effects of food um how does that help your journey a lot of things um health conditions stress gum health I mean things that you probably wouldn't even think of or a lot of people don't um really talk about here on YouTube because that has a direct effect. Your oral health has a direct effect on your fertility, which is very interesting. Stress, which I need to work on. Digestive health. So it's just just reading material. Um, these are generic things that you will probably find um, within just regular dietary um, guidance. So, you know, the difference between the uh, fats and oils, food additives, carbs, things like that, you know, like no to artificial sweeteners, no to added sugar, no to, you know, um, gluten or um, highly sugared breads and things like that, like generic dietary things, you know. So just you can go and uh, you can go on and on and on and on really good um, reading material. Then they go to talk about the meal plans. So part two of this is uh, they give you more um, reading material about the things that they incorporate into this book. Again, more things like that. The regular triangle of health that you often see. 
um, tips for your shopping list. And then it goes into your weeks as a shopping list. What I did with this book is that I didn't want to really like go too crazy with the list that they give you. So they give you a list of what to put in your pantry and your refrigerator, freezer and things like that. And then they go into like um, a suggested meal plan each day for each week. So I didn't want to get bogged down at first with the things that you need to buy. So what I did instead is that I looked at the, so I'm only really concentrating on week one and two right now. So I looked at the days and I try to pick things that I thought would be yummy. So for instance, there's breakfast. You see the chocolate uh, monkey smoothie, overnight oats, avocado toast. So I went to, I skipped all the way to where it says part three, let's eat. That's your actual recipes. So they give you the breakdown of what you need, they give you a suggested meal plan, and then they give you, the rest of it is pretty much the recipes where you will find what you need within here. So what I did is that I look, so I'm gonna just do breakfast. I'm not gonna go over everything. I'm just gonna try to show you how I use the book if you're interested in purchasing. I looked at the breakfast. I'm not a chocolate person. <laughs> I like chocolate every now and then. So this chocolate monkey smoothie right off the bat, I was not interested in. So I'm not going to go ahead and buy the things that I need for this smoothie if I'm not really interested in it. So that breaks down a lot of the things that you need from here, from this section. However, I do like the tropical. I love anything. I love pineapples or mangoes or anything like that. So I do like the tropical green smoothie. I do like the overnight oats and avocado toast. So I looked at everything that I need for that. You'll see here, pineapples, um, ghee, kale, and things like that. So here they go on and tell you how to um, make the overnight oats um, and the smoothie. So for the next two weeks for breakfast, I'm probably gonna have a mixture of those three things. So that way, you know, I can kind of really get my body into kickstart with all the vitamins and things like that for um, breakfast. And then it just goes on to lunch. So I picked up um, lunch. So I went to the lunch portion and I picked out some things with my husband so that way we can cook together and he's also enjoying the things that are in here. And we picked out a bunch of things. We picked out um, a couple salads. We picked out a couple, we picked out the, um, the turkey meatballs, um, the, the fish tacos, and uh, oh, the slow cooker pulled pork. I didn't even think about anything else. I just took those three things out and gave him a shopping list and he'll get those things for us to eat for the next week or so. So, and if we find it too monotonous, then we'll go back and pick one more. So don't go and get everything on this list is my point. Pick and choose what really interests you for the next two weeks and then go based on that. And that's it. So the rest of it is just giving you your um, recipes. And then here, I'm not too sure about this. I'll have to keep reading on it, but it looks like a write-in planning pages. So um, for the week five, six, all the way to week 12, which hopefully I don't get that far. Um, it, it looks like they want, they're wanting you to kind of like build your own plan, depending on the things that you like and how things are working for you and if you're losing any weight or things like that. So really, I really, really, really love this book. I love how it's um, laid out. I think it's very intuitive and I think it's easy to follow. So <clears throat> this is the IVF meal plan if anyone is interested in this. The next item that I have is this um, rose quartz um, bracelet that my mom got me for my birthday. And it came in this really pretty um, card here. The shop is Etsy. Um, it's Casey's Crystal Cove. Again, this will probably be backwards for you, I'm sorry. But I will leave all the information down below. And the fertility wishes, the card says, Rose Quartz is known to increase fertility, alleviate sexual difficulties, and be supportive of the female reproductive system, which is exactly true. And if you um, are 
new here or you've been around uh, my channel for a while, you know that I work a lot with crystals. So this was a really sweet gift from my mom. <clears throat> but yeah, if if anyone wants to gift or gift themselves a uh, rose quartz um, bracelet, it's from Casey's Crystal Cove. And I absolutely adore this piece. I haven't taken it off. And just like a lot of bracelets like this, if it happens to break, that's actually a sign of good luck. So love that. And then it says, um, handmade with love. So pretty. So cute. Love um, that. I got these really cute socks. I don't know where she got them. So I'm going to try to um, search for them and leave them down below. But they say baby dust. Baby dust socks lucky transfer socks so um when that when the transfer day comes i'm saving the socks for that day so super 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 cute when i opened this i that's when the, the tears came it was such a sweet sweet thought from my mom but yeah it's really fun it's really um you know a nice way to kind of put on your feet and just have like you know sprinkle that baby dust um, yeah, so I'll leave a link to these socks. It's so, such a cute gift. So, so cute. The last thing that I want to share with you is this beautiful candle. Oh, God, she's just gorgeous. She's absolutely beautiful. Um, it's like a goddess candle. Look, it has like um, animals and birds and leaves in her hair. And it smells, it smells so good. So good. Her details on her face, beautiful, like holding the world and her belly, just wonderful. This shop is called Curly Candle um, on Etsy. So this is her um, business card and I will leave her information below, but beautiful rose quartz, a candle like this. This is just, if you know any practitioner who is trying to conceive, these are the get perfect gifts for them. Okay, so that was it for this video. Next one, um, you let me know. I'll, I'll take you along like vlog style of my next um, appointments now that we've kind of like aired out the basis of where I am, at, where I'm at in my, um, my journey. So this week, um, I just took my hormones. I just, uh, I, my blood work for my hormone levels. They're not there just yet to start stimulation. So this Thursday, I go back to the doctors to do yet more blood work. And then hopefully, I start my stimulations on Friday and Saturday. And then hopefully by the end of the month, you know, we'll have um, the transfer day and we'll be back here with the results. So um, I'll take you along on that. If you guys want to go through the medication for IVF, if you need help with that, please leave a link down below and I'll do an extensive video on that. So I'm just here trying to spread awareness and, and inspiration and I hope that you will follow me along for the ride. So thank you guys so much and we will see you in the next one. Bye.